So if you're clicking on this video, you're obviously in the market for a little pocket puncher, a little pocket pistol, if you will. And I am making this video because I myself was in said market. Okay, so I did my research and I wanted to invest my money in a platform that facilitated a caliber both beneficial in constraints, i.e. size recoil, as well as something with high efficacy, which basically will get the job done. So to get right to it, I went with the... North American Arms. This model specifically is the Mini Master and is chambered in the motivated 22 Magnum, the 22 WMR, the 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire. And this cylinder has a five round capacity. Now, Johnny Post Production, if you could, for those who cannot visualize the difference between said Magnum round and a 22 long rifle, please hook us up with a motivated interjection. There we go, perfect. So, as you can empirically see, these rounds are no slouch. And if you shop around, you can find variations of this round, such as CCI ammunition. These are typically 30 grain bullets that boast 2200 feet per second, some of which are hollow point, some of which are just hotter loads. As you can see, the large boxes there are primarily predicated on hunting. But if you shop around, you can probably find multiple variations of it at certain price points. I have come to notice that these rounds are quite expensive for what they are. And we're moving on. So you're probably wondering, Sergeant Johnny, USMC, why the fuck did you go with a 22 Magnum? And to that, I would say, why not? This round I have far more confidence in than as if I were carrying a knife. Or no secondary at all. This revolver in itself was a purchase primarily to supplement my primary carry. And affords peace of mind that I can protect both myself and those around me, whether they be family or strangers that are not smart enough to support the Second Amendment if shit ever were to hit the fan. And for those of you naysayers who are saying that 22 caliber may not be the ideal choice, it is a 30 to 35 grain projectile traveling exceedingly fast and will get the job done. I bet you naysayers are giving the offenders far too much credit. I would put my money on the fact that if you punch let alone one hole in these fuckers, they will re-examine their flawed decision-making paradigm if not fall on the ground in the fetal position and start crying. All right, so we're moving on from caliber choice to why this platform, why a revolver? Well, I wanted something that would fit in my pocket comfortably without a holster, without any forethought into carry, which facilitates a very minimalistic carry, one that I can bring to the gym without worry in any kind of gear and carry it comfortably. So I went with a revolver over semi-automatic just for reliability reasons. Semi-autos are notorious for having consistent failures with the rimfire ammo, and rimfire ammo itself is notoriously unreliable. So I wanted to go with a platform that afforded the best chance for me to discharge and expend, whether it be one round or the full cylinder, towards a bad guy. So I did not come to make this investment without having other options. The other options I had was a Smith & Wesson Airlight model chambered in the 22 Magnum, However, I limited my shopping to my local gun haunts as opposed to going online and searching for models offered by Smith & Wesson, which were mimetic to this. The model I came across was the Smith & Wesson Airlight model chambered in 22 Magnum and completely lives up to its name. However, it was a snub nose. I also was not a fan of the fixed notch post sights on the snubby. I completely concede that on this kind of gun, on this kind of use, a secondary pocket puncher, it is primarily used for up close and personal type shit, but I know me and I'm at the range pretty much all the fuck time. So I wanted to get something that was more in line with my tangential use, i.e. range time with target sights and a proper sight radius. All right, and then I saw this guy. This guy was sitting in the shelf and I was immediately drawn to it. I mean, at first glance, it is completely mimetic to the Dan Wesson models. Of revolver and those to me personally I think are ugly as fucking sin but in this size package I think completely make this revolver it being scaled down to this size now conversely if North American arms were to scale this model up to a full-size revolver this same exact design I would definitely buy it because I'm a huge fan of this both the aesthetics as well as the functional aspect of the overall gun I'm a fan. All right, so let's touch upon some of the perceived negative aspects of this purchase. 
So about two months ago, after about a month of carrying this pistol in my front pants pocket, I was at the range with a buddy and I realized something was different. I was looking down range with this motivated bastard about to expend some fucking rounds and it suddenly dawned upon me that I had no rear aperture. This model right here is the Mini Master and it comes with the adjustable rear sights. And said sights have spring retention which is delegated by the screw. So during the course of carry at one point the screw became exceedingly loose so much so that it popped off allowing the spring retention to shoot the rear aperture and said spring off my gun. So I figured this was easily reconciled, so I called North American Arms Customer Service, and I was exceedingly happy with the response I got. They just requested the serial number and the model, and they mailed me a replacement assembly. The whole rear sight. So all you had to do was just drift out the whole housing, which is just installed via groove on top of the frame which you could do with a punch and a hammer. So another negative attribute of this gun that you may inevitably come across is the grip. Now the grip is extremely comfortable ergonomically, but the retention is a little loose. But realistically, that's more of a gripe. So we're moving on. Okay, so another perceived downside to this purchase could be the loading unloading process, but after time and with muscle memory will come efficiently. But let's just go over that. So first all you need to do is cock the trigger partially till you hear the pop, pull down on the tab, pull out, rotate the cylinder out. All right, there you go. Now you're able to both load and unload, which I found is easier to use this piece to, especially with expended brass, with the expansion, it kind of locks in the cylinder pretty good. Or you can do a proper field cleaning and get this piece back to par. And the reassembly is rinse and repeat. Cock the hammer, slide in the cylinder, install the male end of this piece into the female end of the cylinder, pull down and push. And you are back in business. So the last perceived negative aspect of this gun could be the finish. I bought it new, but yet it came with scratches on the polished surfaces. And all I had to do to reconcile that was a quick sanding and polishing. I.e. sanding with a high count paper, following it up with some mother's polish. Alright, so enough with the negative Nancy bullshit. Let's go with some of the positives of this purchase. Because again, I am a fan of this revolver. And the first attribute of this revolver that comes to mind is the barrel length. The barrel length affords this caliber a better chance to reach its full potential. Because, as you maybe don't know, barrel length is correlated with both speed and accuracy. I.e. the longer the barrel, the more time the bullet has a gas force behind it to both push it faster and put more rotation on it, both allowing both speed and set accuracy. Having the longer barrel also allows a greater sight picture. All a sight picture is is just the distance between the front blade post to the rear aperture. And the distance between the two exponentially decreases the chance of human error. Alright, so another positive aspect of this purchase is again the sights. The sights are target sights and they're extremely beautiful. I really became a fan of that sight picture, especially with contrasted with the aforementioned notch post of the Smith & Wesson Snubby. And I mean, it says a lot that this company beat out Smith & Wesson in my eyes because I'm a huge proponent of Smith & Wesson revolvers. Lastly, the best attribute of this is the size to caliber ratio. And to get a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's go back to that Smith & Wesson revolver. Now to me, my first impression was it was a lot of gun for what it is. And to me, its function was no more than a small caliber gun. So that Airlight model I was contemplating was more along the lines of my perspective on Ruger SP series. And to me, the SP series is way too much fucking gun for what it is. And what it is is a five shot revolver that is built like a tank. Just complete over engineering. So basically my two choices boil down to a gun that was retrofitted to facilitate a smaller caliber and afforded maybe one more shot. I believe it was a six round. It could be a five round. Johnny post production will put in an annotation. Another pro of purchase could be the safety cylinder. Now let's get into a little bit of history. Uh, this company was originally Rocky Mountain Firearms and they're based in Utah and they started around 1972 
They changed ownership around 1974, where they changed the name to North American Arms. And surprisingly, these pocket revolvers design originally came from Freedom Arms. And they stopped selling them, I believe, early 90s, where North American Arms purchased the design. And from that point, they made changes to said cylinder. They augmented the cylinder with the slots in between the cylinder ports, which allows the hammer to rest safely on it while carrying and not resting on the house munition. So ultimately, if you're in the market for a little pocket plunger, this is an outstanding option. So I'm a huge fan of this little revolver. It is both fun to shoot and practical as far as a secondary carry choice. So if you agree and or disagree, let me know down in the comments below. And if you don't like leaving comments, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't like being called out for not liking to leave comments, leave a comment below. Err.